Hi, friend. Ah, take a deep breath. I just did, and it felt really good. Because I sometimes come to these, uh, uh, creating these videos, having been rushing around, um, getting the lighting right, and making sure that the, uh, the space that I'm in is conducive to my uh, mind bringing to you from my heart what I wish to share this day. <clears throat> and what's on my mind and on my heart to bring to you this day is the idea and the practice and the assignment that I have had over many years and currently still have, that is how to teach Tantra to a man. So any men that are listening, I think you'll learn a lot from this conversation. And to you women who are listening, many, many, many women, <clears throat> excuse me, ha have a deep longing for something in sex that is more. And they don't always know what the more is. Is it longer sessions of sex? Is it more uh, variety around your sexuality? Is, what is it that you want more of? And I know from many, many, many talks with women and from my own journey into love, what I wanted more of that was missing so often in normal, everyday, all American, all universal sex, what was missing was connection. The sex might be great. It might be like transformational. Tell your best girlfriend all about it. Walk away the next morning or that afternoon with a great big smile on your face. Wow, that was great. But so many women and many men have shared with me that they long for more connection with that person who they just had sex with. So that's the topic of today's conversation. How to have a deeper connection with a partner that you are liking, where your sexuality goes with him or her, with each other, but also how would you women who want more connection, more intimacy, I'll call it also more Tantra, in your sexuality and sexual loving, how to communicate that to a man. So I've, for phew, 25 years, I've been teaching larger groups of people, almost always men and women, um, pretty equally balanced, both singles and couples. And occasionally over the years, especially when I was younger, I would do private Tantra teaching with men and those often included being sexual with them in the process of teaching them what is Tantra in the bedroom. What is Tantra between two people? Here's a way to practice with me that you can now take out into the world of women that you're going to love and be more uh, intimate with them, be more present with them, I also would teach the men many different techniques to give a woman more pleasure and also techniques for the men to, shall we say, last longer without the need to end the sexual loving, uh, maybe as early as he felt he was ready to end it with his ejaculatory orgasm which often and usually does end sex, at least for a little while, depending on the refractory period of the male. The refractory period is the time between his ejaculation and therefore orgasm and his next erection. Some men never lose their erection after an ejaculation. Some men lose their erection for a short period of time up to a long period of time. Uh, doesn't make you better or less a great lover. 
It simply means that the amount of energy it takes for your whole body, men, to create that erection, there's less of that energy available if you've been ejaculating a lot. The ejaculation in men uh, um, lessens their creative power and therefore their sexual power for a period of time, even though it feels fabulous to have those ejaculatory orgasms. It's very hard to get the information across to a man that as you grow older, some of you are not old enough to need to know this, um, but if you're past 40 or 50, it's probably time to pay attention to how much of your life force energy do you lose and for how long after your ejaculatory orgasm. So the women need this information every bit as much as the men do because it's the women, us, girls, who are programmed and trained and we are saturated with this great truth that it is our job to get a man off, meaning to get him into his orgasmic release of great pleasure so he can melt into a, a great relaxed state of great peace, which it is for a man, just as it is for a woman. That post-orgasmic bliss, in some cases for some men, is also a post-orgasmic blues. I invite you to take a deep breath on that information. So in having an invitation uh, from my point of view to teach a much younger man, let's say, uh, about Tantra without being sexual with him, which I no longer choose to be, uh, at this time in my life. I love teaching Tantra and I love preparing those men for the women who want a man who is more tantric in nature. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means he is more connected to the divine within himself when he comes into the sexual exchange with you. It means that his ejaculatory orgasm is not necessarily the first order of business. Yeah, that's a big shift for a lot of women because m most of us have experienced as younger women with younger men that it's his ejaculatory orgasm that kind of leads the sex to the finale. And it is usually comes a little bit later in life that men are trained enough or educated enough or mature enough to put the woman first. There's a wonderful book on my Kindle. What is the name of it? Women Come First or coming, uh, something about women coming first. Um, but it's so true. And I, from the time I was in my 20s, oh my God, you guys, that was 50 years ago, I have been with men who always treated me that way. And my orgasms were first. And my orgasms and many women's orgasms are the most powerful opening to our big sexual energy is through clitoral orgasm. Now for some women, the clitoral orgasm ends their arousal for a while, at least a little while. And the mature, educated, more advanced, masterful man wants the woman to have that huge release of clitoral orgasmic energy, if that is her choice, and then move into penetration and the dance of love through intercourse, where she's liable to be a lot more open to the big flows of male-female joining and oneness for the great expanded pleasure that that can be. But her clitoral orgasm, not for all women, but for many women, is the gateway to that. 
So I've been very fortunate in my life to always be with men uh, who understood that uh, without me even having to ask for it first. And then came a time in my life where I have been with a man for 20 years where that is not his training, it is not his education, it is not his preference. And though it has always been mine, I decided to give it up for the relationship because the relationship is really good. The domestic partnership companionship is excellent. It's very good. Our communication with each other is very good. And I've learned to give myself those extraordinary and powerful orgasms through my pearl, which I've discussed with you in previous videos, um, <clears throat> calling the clitoris your pearl often engorges it and makes that part of your body feel more alive. Some of you like the good old sex terms for your lady parts and man parts, and I'm probably not gonna repeat them here on YouTube because it leaves um, the um, critics of YouTube uh, in question about who should listen to these videos. So everybody knows the porn words and the, the sex words for uh, for sex, <laughs> and I'm not gonna repeat them now, but I think what I love about Tantra and the education in Tantra so much is that there is another language that we learn for describing and defining and referring to our sexual organs of pleasure in a vocabulary that is a much more exalted and expanded communication because the power of the spoken word is very real thing. You're listening to the power of the spoken word right now on this video and you listen to people in their videos or in movies and on songs where the power of their word either sung or spoken uh, moves you to tears or moves you to get up and dance or moves you to feel something, right? So this vocabulary from the Eastern mystics of Taoism and Tantra is really quite potent once you get used to the terminology. The term for the woman, uh, for her vagina, is the word yoni, Y-O-N-I. And yoni translates from the Sanskrit to mean sacred space. Now, how does that land for you, ladies? That you have a sacred space that you invite a partner into for the sake of ecstatic ecstasy and love sharing. And you men, oh boy, the slang words for what you guys carry around. In Tantra, the name for the man's penis is lingam. L-I-N-G-H-A-M, or L-I-N-G-A-M, some spellings. It is also a very ancient Sanskrit word, Sanskrit being the most ancient language uh, coming from our people and our friends in India, Hindu especially. So the lingam of the man, the translation for that word from the Sanskrit is wand of light, or wand of God. So the first thing I would do in a teaching situation with a man is invite him to tell me all the names he uses for his passion center, for his wand, and let's just hear them and I'll say them and you say them and we'll get the words out. <clears throat> and then let's practice saying a word like lingam, which doesn't necessarily sound very sexy initially, uh, but it's the historical meaning of the word that carries the most power. And that's why these words are very powerful. These names are very powerful because they carry historical perspective. Wand of light and wand of God. Well, I can't think of anything 
more potent and powerful that I would want inside of me than a wand of light or a wand of God. And any man who possesses one of those, I would at least enter into a, an emotional or verbal conversation about should we or shouldn't we. And a man who owns one of those also carries himself through life with a much more exalted attitude about himself as a lover and a lover of love and a lover of women. The term, I've looked it up on Wikipedia, you can do the same thing, um, for the word cock. Cock is a, also a, a chicken. It's actually a male chicken. Uh, <clears throat> and cock means fighting rooster. Should you go to Wikipedia and look it up? And once I heard that, and once I read that, I could never call a man's penis his cock ever again. Now this is for people who really want to ascend on the tantric path of sexual, spiritual loving. Some of you listening are, have left this video already because you want to go back to the good porn stuff. And that's just fine. You really have to be ready for this. You have to want this. There has to be something driving you towards ascension in the area of something as powerful and as sacred and as consuming as our sexual energy. Many men have told me it's the, all I think about. It's the number one thing on my mind. No matter what kind of business I'm, I'm up to or doing or speaking about or making in the world of business, sex is the underlying energy and focus of my mind. Sometimes women tell me that, but more often men. So, okay, sexual energy is creative energy. So you men who have that underlying and constant and ever-present focus on a woman's body or whatever it is that arouses you and your sexual energy and the energy in your lingam, which is a very powerful thing, <clears throat> that's your creative energy flowing through all of you not just down there, it's creative energy flowing through you. And it's coming out in your business proposals and in your deal making, in your baby making. So there's a lot to this subject. So once I got through the vocabulary with a, a new man that I'm teaching, I would also wanna bring him into his energy body. I want, to, I want to work with his mind for a little while and then I want to drop into the body and the energy body through the yoga part of Tantra and bring him into some stretches and some poses. We call, call them asanas in yoga. They are poses, geometric shapes and poses that expand the energy body. Now your body is your physical body. Yeah, you know, your skin, your flesh, your bones, your blood your muscles, <clears throat> but your energy body's out here. It's the field around you. And it's a very real thing. It's scientifically proven that field. It can be photographed in something called Carillion photography. And when you are riding a wave in the ocean or running on a track at high speed or having full-blooded, full-on, yes, sex, or, or helping your beloved deliver her children. <laughs> There's an energy field around high states of living and life and experiencing that outside of the flesh and around you, you feel like you're in a bubble of this, of this bubbling energy, this, this um, yeah, energy is what it is. And some of you say, well, I don't feel energy or I don't see energy but you only have to look. Because <laughs> it's not really as tangible as our skin and our flesh, but energy is everywhere. Energy is everywhere and it's in everything. So it's in some of the yoga poses and stretches, the simplest of them, the easiest of them. 
It does not take an advanced class for you to find your energy body. All right, can I have another deep breath from you right now? Ah, oh, so those deep breaths also help your physical body's energy expand into the non-physical, to the field around you. The breathing is essential to feeling and finding that field. So that would be the next piece of business, let's say in a private class or in a group class, is getting those of you in the, in the class standing or sitting in a cross-legged seat or lying down and doing some simple stretches that I would guide you uh, or any good yoga teacher would guide you in, a, in slow movement. This is not hyper Bikram hot class fast exercise yoga. This is very slow moving, like swimming through molasses yoga. Okay, so since I'm slowing down into the molasses of the yoga, I think I'm gonna slow down on this conversation and uh, so that I don't lose your interest after too many minutes and pick up where I left off uh, in, my next, in my next video. Uh, where do we go from finding our physical energy field around our body the mind getting some more information about the quality of the names that we use to call the parts of the body uh, with each other. That doesn't mean you can't still use those other names. It just means that you're practicing an art form that elevates the consciousness of those parts of the body to resonate with those words. The words are ancient. The tantric vocabulary is ancient in nature. And it is the mystics and the ancient knowledge that is rebirthing on the planet today. Okay, thank you until we meet again. Namaste. I bow to the divine within you from the divine within me.